Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, you're all welcome. Today is another great day that the Lord has made. We are happy and, you know, it is a time of prayer. It's a time of worship. It's a time we do set aside to praise God. And today won't be different. It will still be the normal salt and light club, which we normally have every first Saturday of the month. So I welcome everyone. Welcome everyone on board. And I know we've have, you know, we've put our fighting spirit, um, our prayer spirit. This is a time that we really, really, you know, focus and pray to God. We're praying for our children, we are praying for the parents and the caregiver. Uh, this is it is a time to like bank our prayer, you know, store it, put it in the storehouse of God, and we know that God will definitely hear us. Hallelujah. So I really think I'm taking this time to like welcome everyone and I want us to like settle. We have our guest speaker who will be taking us through this um, one hour program tonight. And I know that by the time we were through tonight, we will indeed be blessed and our children will be blessed. And um, the caregiver, the parents and all the guardians that look after our children, they will be blessed. Hallelujah, amen. The theme for tonight is show us your mercy. Oh. There's no prayer we want to pray tonight aside this prayer. It is a great prayer tonight. Show us your mercy. Show our children your mercy. Show our loved ones your mercy, the parents your mercy. It's only by the grace of God and by the mercy of God that we thrive and that we will so succeed. And I just want to encourage everyone tonight that, you know, you prepare your heart. Prepare your heart to pray tonight as we go through that God will show us your, his mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so we will just start quickly. We've taken like about five or uh, there are about five minutes. So we will pray. I'm just going to open tonight with a short prayer and then we will invite our guest minister and then we can kick back this program. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your great love and for your blessings. Father, we thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for your favor that lasts for a long time. It has no end. Father, we thank you. It lasts for an eternity and you've shown us your mercy, your goodness. Oh, righteous God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus who sits at your right hand. Oh, we thank you for the sacrifice which saves us. We thank you for your many blessings which you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for another day in your presence. Father, you've asked us to come boldly before your presence, before your throne, that we will obtain mercy and grace. And this is what we've come to do tonight. We've come to ask for your mercy, for you to show us your mercy. Oh Lord, we know that the heavens are open already for this meeting tonight. And we know you will show us great mercy. You will show our children mercy. You will show every one of us mercy, our family. You will show us mercy. Father, we welcome you. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you. Take charge, oh God. Oh, Father, we take charge of this atmosphere tonight. We pray that you will do what you alone would can do. It's only you alone who can do things. And you have been doing things in our life. And therefore, Lord, tonight we ask that you take charge. Minister unto us, O God. Father, we pray that you touch every lives in the name of Jesus. We pray that you mend every broken heart tonight. Oh, as we call upon you to show us mercy. Father, we pray, God, that heaven will open unto us in the name of Jesus. I commit everyone of us into your mighty hands and I cover us with the blood of Jesus. Quicken our spirits to pray tonight, O God. Quicken our mouth to body, O God. Father, that we will stand strong in the gap tonight, oh, to pray and to intervene for our children and to intercede for our children, for our parents, for our loved ones, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray for the speaker, oh, which you will use tonight, 
Lord, we pray, oh God, that you will speak through her. You will do wonders through her. Father, we're waiting, oh God, and we believe, oh God, that there will be miracles, oh, as a result of tonight, in the name of Jesus. Father, as a result of tonight, oh God, there will be testimonies, in the name of Jesus. Life will be changed. Troubled souls, oh God, Father, will be healed, in the name of Jesus. Mental issues and things that surround us, oh God, all those worries, oh God, will be taken away tonight, in the name of of Jesus. Father, we pray that you use her mightily, oh God. And we pray that tonight, oh God, that you send heavens, oh God. You send your angels, oh God, that they will take charge and take preeminence in our prayer meeting tonight in the name of Jesus. And therefore, Lord, tonight, oh God, we open this prayer in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, I'll hand over to our Pastor Mrs. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Samara. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I um, hope you can all you can hear me. Welcome. So I'm not going to take any much of our time. Greetings from our pastor. Um, they're in a pastor's program, but they are joining us as they they coming along. Um, Today we have in our midst a very dear woman of God, amazing woman of God that God is using mightily in our midst here in Scotland, a woman on fire for Jesus and for the kingdom of God. And it gives me so much a privilege to welcome our dear Reverend Comforts that will be leading us tonight as we cry for mercy for our children, for our parents, caregivers, and for ourselves. And I pray that you be blessed in Jesus' name. Over to you, Ma. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Happy to see you, your face again, Pastor Christine, and thank you to everyone in Tabernacle of Grace, Mosul Bar, and every uh, of our parishes joining. I thank God for Edinburgh Tabernacle. I understand that uh, it's a combined uh, program today. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. And so I want to celebrate the grace of God in the life of our uh, pastors, Pastor Precious, Rabbi uh, Temitayo, uh, Pastor Bishop Yala, and Pastor Mrs. Yala, I want to celebrate all of you. We thank God for the great work that God is doing. When I saw the topic, when Pastor Precious was speaking to me, I he said it was, show us your mercy. And I said, you see, we are a product of the mercy of God. And we are, you know, when we talk of having faith to do something, before we even have faith to believe, we're actually a product of mercy. God did not wake up and, you know, say, you know what, let me clear out these guys, let's start all over again. We are a product of mercy. And it took me to, uh, try to understand the meaning of the word mercy. And there's one illustration I'll give us in scriptures before I, we begin to pray. Glory be to God. Um, the definition, the word mercy, uh, scripturally is compassionate. Someone that is compassionate or kindly forbearing. The person is forbearing, but kindly. When I read, when I read kindly there, I said, could it be that someone can forbear, but not kindly? But mercy means someone is kindly forbearing. I just came straight. If I got into uh, the house, we got into the house five minutes to five. I just want to say that I mean start, uh, Pastor Manuel and I mean start somewhere, Mother Will, you know? And so we're running, we're just racing to get in. So that's why I'm looking all, uh, dressed up like I'm not looking like Saturday, so forgive me for that. But uh, the meaning of mercy, like I said, is compassion and kindly forbearing, showing that towards showing compassion and forbearance towards an offender. Do you know that by reason of our conception and birth, we were actually conceived in sin and delivered in sin, and so. The mercy of God is so that he forbears and I want to use the word, someone that is overlooking the fact that we are sentenced to the, to the, to the, uh, um, we are sentenced under the law or under anything to, to die where we have, we have no, 
we have no um, what do they call it? We have no there's there's we are not supposed to be you know, treated the way it treats us. God treats us. But by his mercy, he's just too merciful. For it's just too compassionate. Then you see, he's, he's forbearing, forbearing towards the offender or the enemy. You know, because last Sunday I was teaching and I said something that, uh, I, I think I read the scripture in Exodus, where God was saying, uh, he's turning his back on those that hate him. Someone asked a question because it was an interaction, uh, interaction said, the person said, but, he has not seen anybody that hates God. I say, ah, do you know how we hate God? We actually hate God by not doing what is in his word. So you may not pronounce it that today, from now on, I hate God, but because we don't do according to his will, we now mark ourselves as an enemy of God. That means a lot of people are in church, are on the streets, are in schools, are in places, but they don't know they have already marked themselves as God, God's enemy. What did uh, Moab do that God separated them? They didn't come particularly to say, God, from now we're enemies and all that. We're, no, no, no. Oh, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. No, no, no. There were things. They were not doing things in accordance with the will of God. God say left. They say right. You now mark yourself as enemy. But mercy comes to interrupt the unfortunate problems you have caused by yourself. By birth, your father and mother met. My, me and my husband met. We gave birth to children. We have already produced children that will need the mercy of God. The caregivers, the uh, the parents that are connected here, we are going to pray. But before we do, also like I was saying, it is someone that the person that can give mercy is the one that is compassionate enough, not just that, but it's benevolent. Do you know that when I was much younger in faith, I used to hear that word benevolence very well. Benevolence, benevolence. You know, God is benevolent. Is large has a large threshold for mercy. And today we're going to cry for mercy. There's a story in the book of Luke chapter 15 that shows me how God deals with us. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 35. It was a parable of the two sons. Because of time, I'll just uh, round uh, talk about it. It was a parable of the, the two, the prodigal sons. One of them came to the father and said, it's time, I'm done with all of this. All this protocol rubbish i need to get out i need to go and fend for myself i need to give me my own portion i need to go and every day we keep doing that to god in one way or the other we may not come and say give me the money i need now 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 but some of us will come in the place of marriage ah if i'm not getting married i don't know if this serving god is getting too much give me the husband give me a wife give me now 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 and then god gave him god gave him his portion and he left and when he went because he did not take the man all along. He did what he liked with it. And then there was another one that sat at home, like some of us got saved or with us, his father. And you know, he, 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 he just knew his father has wanted the right thing to be done and he just stayed with him and he did this, he did that. And one day the Bible said like a scale fell off the eyes of the older son. And he said, ah, I'm eating from the pigs, um, a plate here, I'm eating like a pig. But I have a father that is a big God. You know, I'm going to swallow my pride and I'm going back to my father. Come on, I'll go, I yes, you tell me, get out. But I'm going back to my father. And he went back to his father. And when he got to his father, ah, when the father heard news that he's on his way, he just, he said, we're going to do a feast. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Oh, let's wear red. Let's wear, let's do a show. Let's do that. My son is coming back. And the one at home that did not know that, even him at home, is there by virtue of the mercy of the father. He was now there like the church people in quotes that now say, ah, me I've been here serving. Someone told me once, was it Reverend Kofu? Reverend Kofu, I don't understand. If somebody will not be in church for a while, after four weeks, they'll come, you'll hug them. I say, ah, sister, what do you want me to do? Say, no, no, no. I, I say, you don't know our father. That's how God is. If you like sleep in church from morning to night, when would a prodigal child out of 99, uh, 100 sheep, one got missing, he left the 99, went to look for one. That's how the father's heart is. And that was how this boy came back and daddy celebrated him. Say, oh, this, oh, that. And the younger son was offended because he did not know that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, no matter what we do. His mercy, yo, he has a large heart, never comes to an end. And that was how 
he did not understand. He became a psychophant as a Christian or as a person or as a child in the house. But when mm -hmm. everything, as soon as this boy came back, the father stretched his arms as a welcome home, my beloved son. Today, you know, we are going to thank God for the opportunity to be under the mercy of God. The opportunity that he did not cut off our neck as soon as we missed it. The mercy of God, even helping us. Sometimes we are tired. The way we talk to the children, the way we carry them along, the way we do things may not be exactly how we should be. We're saying, Father, we thank you. I want you to just lift up your voice. We're here to pray. Come on. I want you to say, Father, I thank you for your benevolence over my life. I thank you for the benevolence over me as I look after my children. You see, you have given them to me to look after. Father, I give you all the glory. Father, I magnify your name. Oh, I exalt you, precious Jesus. I exalt you, precious Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your steadfast Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your steadfast Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. When we say, show me thy mercy, there's something we must remember as fathers, as mothers, grandparents, and caregivers, that we are only stewards. We do not own the children. We, we are not, they are not even given to us because we know what to do. We, they are given to us as stewards. We are stewards. We are people that God knows that we are in a process of becoming who he wants us to be. But while we are learning on the job, while you're on it, I'm going to give you these children. I'm going to give you this teenager. I'm going to give you this boy, this girl, for you to help me nurture them. And God handed them to you. And not because you are better than the next couple that don't have a child. Not because you are more skilled, but by his mercy. You're going to lift your voice and say, since mercy found me, Mercy helped me to raise my children. Mercy found me. Mercy helped me to raise my children. Mercy found me. Mercy helped me to raise my children. Mercy found me. Mercy helped me to raise the children in the way of the Lord. Mercy, you have helped me to find, oh, not because I am worthy, but because of your mercy. In Santa, Makoto Santa, God and bless me. Even the things I did many years ago, you won't give me a child. Even with the things I said many years ago, you won't give me a, a son. If it's the things I did, oh, my Asunta, you would not have not found me worthy, but your mercy found me worthy. Father, I give you praise. I give you honor. All the glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Now, it's very important for us to know that it is only by his mercy that will take children into this generation and bring them out sane, normal, talking well, dressing well, acting well, being in a right mental state. It is only by the mercy of God. You see, the world is not just corrupt, it's full of wickedness. The heart of man is increasingly getting wicked. You wouldn't blame God. When in Genesis, he just said, the, the Bible said, he repented God to create man. Wickedness upon wickedness. The, 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 the record showing pedophiles all over the world, including the United Kingdom, is increasing by the day. There was lockdown. It's still increasing. In fact, some people that their fathers were not abusing them before, during the lockdown, they started abusing them. Lift up your voice and say, Father, help me the wisdom by your mercy. Help me with the wisdom by your mercy. Help me the wisdom by your mercy to raise my children in the way of the Lord. In perverse generation, help me by your mercy. Help me by your mercy. Help me mercy to raise my children in the way of the Lord. To raise my children in the way of the Lord. Help me, oh God, that I will not want to Help me, precious Jesus. Help me, precious Jesus. We are praying for you, first of all, because it's important for you to know that you, the state of your mind, the state of your mind, mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, is very important. And God wants 
wants to touch them through you. And he came to you. And we are praying for you first. Lord, oh, let you pass your son. Oh, God, children, at the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, help us to raise our children in the way of the Lord. Help us to raise our children in the way of the Lord. Help us to raise our children in the way of the Lord. Help us. In the name of Jesus, by your mercy, help us, oh God. Let your mercy, oh God, supersede, supersede every guilt. Let it flow in such a way that my guilt will not be seen, that my past will not be recorded, that everything I did in the past will not work out my children and their future. In the name of Jesus, help me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Can we please quickly? Look at the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 18 to 19. And if you are there, you can help me read quickly. Micah, chapter 2, verse 18 to 19. Anybody there, please? Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, 18 to 19. Where is another God like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant, overlooking the sins of his special people? You will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. Once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sin under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. Oh God, have mercy upon my children. Do not record the sins of my father, the sins of my grandfather, my own sins against them. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Oh God, have mercy. Have compassion over my children. Oh God, have mercy. Have compassion over my children. You will not the sins of the trumpets against them. Come on, I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your voice. Jesus, Father, have no have mercy, O oh God, on oh my children. Moyanga lika kata lika sata. Sins of my children. You will not visit them on me. You will not visit them on my children. Sins of my children. My grandfather. You will not visit them upon my children. Ayaga lika sata. Let mercy prevail in their life in the name of Jesus. Robraka sonta lika ndere brosa. Ibanda kando. Manada kalika brosa. Amen. It's a story of Eli and his children. The Bible says something. He said, Eli's sons were scruderous. They had no regard for the Lord. How can their father be a prophet and they had no regard for the Lord? How could it be that their father was not a prophet that could be ignored in scripture, but the Bible is recording, it says they had no regard for the Lord. There must have been a problem, maybe between Eli and the wife, maybe between Eli and God when he goes to do his service, maybe negligence, maybe something, but all we know is that these boys were raised on the altar, but they hated the altar. We are lifting up our voice and say, I am a child of God. I am serving you. I am working with you. I declare my children, oh, Kalika Santa, that you have given me, uh, they will serve the Lord, the God of Israel all the days of their life. Lift up your voice and pray. Maliga Sonda Lekata, they will serve the Lord. They will not hate the Lord. They will not depart from the Lord. They will not disregard the Lord. 
we have prayed. Jesus, amen. amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. amen. The Bible said, now it was the practice. That means that these children knew what was meant to be done. The Bible said, now it was a practice. Now, they, first of all, they didn't regard God, right? But now it was a practice of the priest that whenever any of the people offer the sacrifice, the priest servant will come with a tree pro pronged fork in his hand while the meat was being poured and will plug the fork into the pan and kettle and cradle or pot. Whenever the fork brought up, the, the priest would take for himself. This is how they treated all the Israelites who came to Shiloh. But even before the fat was born, the priest servant will come and say to the person who is sacrificing, give the priest some meat to roast. He won't accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. If the person said to him, let the fat be born first, and then whatever, whatever, you should be done. Then 17, the Bible says, this sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord. So, okay, let me read that 16. If the person said to him, let the fat be born first, and then take whatever you want, the servant would answer, no, hand it over now. If you don't, I'll take it back by force. Verse 17, this sin of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. They were children. They were men. They were people that knew what should be done in the temple, but they were treating God's word with work with disregard. We're going to lift up our voice. You see, if you're a Christian, I should tell parents, I say, you are the biggest enemy of the devil. You know why? From the beginning, as soon as Eve was deceived by the serpent, the God himself put empty between the seed of the woman and the devil. So as soon as you're a parent, you're the first target, the devil hates you. He wants to bring you down, bring your children down so that God will be displeased. And so there was an, an enmity between the seed of the woman. And when the devil heard that sentence from the mouth of God, he thought that, okay, maybe it's Cain and Abel is talking about. He brought problem. Mm. He said, okay, okay, it, it should be uh, Noah's lineage. Okay, it should be in Abraham's children. Let's make him miss. He just kept guessing, guessing, guessing. He looked at Moses. He said, the way this guy's life is patterned, it must be that seed though. And a lot of children lost their life during the time of Moses. Remember the first, in fact, lost their life because they were looking for him. The devil was on an assignment to ravage the family. They said they see this against you, right? Okay, I'm looking for that. Not knowing that God had a master plan. And so you need to know as a parent that your children, as a steward to them, your children that have been given to you are to be nurtured in the way of the Lord. And look at Eli's children. They must have been raised in the temple, but they were going astray. You're going to lift up your voice and you're praying for your children. I don't want us to joke about it. I want us to lift up our voice and say, my children are guided. They are covered. The Bible mm -hmm. says children are an heritage mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. The hands of a strong man, so they are, are they. And by if them any still man whose quiver is full of them, the child wants to guide my children. 
the longer you are saying you will by the gifts of God, you will not be happy. And in this perfect, you will not be swallowed in the name of Jesus. I will to speak upon your life. I will speak upon your destiny. When they are in college, guide them, oh God, that will be I begin to say you Jesus walk in the way him, of the Lord. I Father, want you to oh lift your voice and say, I am the children that the Lord has given me for signs and wonder. We are your covering. We are under your leadership. We are under your leadership. In the name of Jesus. Your Let your mercy overshadow them. Let your mercy come upon them. Let your mercy come upon them. In the name of Jesus. Let your mercy come upon them. Let your mercy come upon them. In the name of Jesus. Guide them, O God, by your mercy. Your mercy will lead them to good life. Your mercy will lead them to righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name, we're afraid. Amen. Amen. See, the problem that couples have is not because of them too. No, no, no. The problem is the siege that the enemy always wants to get to. A couple that were when we that came came for counseling, or rather, uh, a woman called up on us. No midnight one day and said, I need to see, I need to see, and it's okay. Give her time, come, let's have a conversation. And on the counseling table, the woman said, I just came to tell, I just wanted to tell somebody I'm about to do something. I said, What is it? He said, I'm about to finish my husband. I said, What is it? My husband did this, my husband did that. But I am going to make sure that everything he has, I take 70% of it. I, as in, he was talking to her. At some point, I said, This madam, don't remember I'm a pastor. He was talking, she was talking, we let her talk. She spoke, and when she spoke, at some point, some people are telling her that because of what the husband did, divorce. Do, 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 do. I said, my dear, even there are provisions in scriptures about divorce and what led to Moses saying there could be a divorce. What? Well, not much of the story. We're able to make her persevere a little bit so that God would take his course. I put her on a uh, 20, uh, seven days prayer and just see your angry cry before God. You don't need the topic. Just talk to God in seven days. Let's see how it goes. And we just kept trying to manage. I said, okay, let's have a conversation with your husband. He won't let, he won't agree to come. I just tell him. He eventually came. We're having a conversation. I asked both of them one question. And that's one thing I want you to put in your mind today. I said, if there is a breakdown in a marriage, who is the first person to be affected? They looked at each other and said the children. I said, fantastic. Thank God you know. You know what the devil does all the time? He will push the man to do something so that the woman will come and they will have a fight. Then they say, let's go a different way. Let's go. Why? The seed is the problem. The seed is the problem. You are saying, Lord, have mercy. Anywhere the enemy found a loophole in my marriage, in order to reach my children, I said, the devil, my house, my seed is preserved. My children are preserved. My seed is preserved. Refuse it now. Refuse it now. In the name of Jesus, the enemy has found a loophole. The enemy is not a fish to destroy the seed. The enemy is not a fish. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them be preserved. Let your mercy let the seed be preserved. In the name of Jesus. Mighty name, we are praying. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Looking through the Bible, I need no matter how great Moses did what he did and all of that, we remember the significant impact of Moses' mother mm. on his journey. But my question all the time was, where was his father? You know what the enemy does to the seed in 21st century is that it will make the home imbalance. Mm. There's nothing you know as a woman that you can replace a man. Hello. Some people will delete me from now. There's nothing. I am preaching in 21st century. There's nothing. There is what? No, I am telling you that no matter how important I feel I am. Do you know that sometimes my husband will handle an issue with the children and I'll be in awe. I just saying to you, you are so, you are this, you know, intelligent. You know why? Is the way God, his own stewardship ability is different from my own stewardship ability. And so God designed in such a way that Abraham and uh, Adam, I beg your pardon, would have just come and, you know, God would have manufactured children, you know, and then there'll be no need for Eve. But God said, it is not good. That means, to, you know, everything, first day, on the first day of creation, God said it, 
and God saw that it was good. And God saw, second day, it was good. Fourth day, fifth day. Then on the sixth day, when he finished, he said, and God saw that it was not good. Not that man was not good, but it was not good for him to be alone. And God made him a helpmate. So that together they will steward the responsibility of raising their children. My little boy, I was bringing them from school so last week. And he said to me, mommy, uh, some, some in my class wants to get married to another person in P3. I said, eh. I, in fact, the conversation it confused me. I said, okay, so, uh, so what do they know about marriage? He said, I don't know. I said, okay, you, what do you know about marriage? And he said, when daddy, a daddy and a mommy get married, they look after their children. I'm telling you, that's what the innocent answer this boy gave me. They look after, so as far as he's concerned, as a lay person in his mind, he's just to take care of children. And so are you now telling me that, God forbid, if that child, the father go one way or the mother go one way, it will, there'll be no problem with their mental understanding of things. Lift up your voice. Any attack, the enemy is bringing to scatter your home, to scatter your seed. He's doing it and making it look like it's your husband. He's doing it and making it look like Send the fire of the Holy Ghost. Send the fire of the Holy Ghost. Send the fire of the Holy Ghost. My husband is God. I declare. I declare. Oh, the fire of the living God right now. I found you out. I found you out. In the name of Jesus. My husband has the wives are preserved by the mercy of God in the name of Jesus our marriages are preserved in the name of Jesus amen amen if by any means you are the son of my voice and one partner is missing there's provision for you in scripture the Bible said, I'll be father to the fatherless. Because he knew that there'll be conditions where some fathers would be stupid. He said, I'll be mother. Uh, um, what do they call it? He said, I'll be uh, husbands to the, to the widows, isn't it? Because he knew that there'll be situations like that. He said, the Bible is the most reasonable book in the world. God wrote it intentionally. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible said, very simply, he said, I'll be father to them. So, because he knew some people will be fatherless somehow. Ranga mm -hmm. mm -hmm. hear the sound of my voice. And you have you are tired of being a father and a mother. Mm -hmm. I ask for the mercy and the strength of God to rest Amen. upon you. Lift up your voice Amen. and shout for people. Show mercy, O God. Receive the blessing. You are the father, you are the mother. In the name of Jesus, for every woman where there is distance in relationship, Father, show mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Maru. Even the ones that are available and yet they are not fulfilling their duties, but show mercy, O God, unto these ones for the sake of these children, O God, show mercy. More show mercy, O God, to every man in the name of Jesus, raising children of their own. Father, show mercy in the name of Jesus. You said you'll be father to the fatherless because of these children, O God, show mercy. Mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, seemed to be a woman that may have been married or was married but was alone. You know, you can actually be married and be alone. Oh, come on. Can be my son can be married and they are still alone. And we find that a lot of people in church are married but alone. We found out that that because we have preached so much. God hate divorce. God hate divorce. God, we, we have all, everybody has accepted that now. God hate divorce. So I don't want to be on God's bad side. So, but a lot of people are in marriage and are alone. They're either alone in parenting or alone in finances or alone. They're alone somehow. And it breaks down the children. It breaks them. Glory be to God. Jacob looked like that woman that was alone. Because they mentioned the father of Moses, but in formation of his destiny, the man was not part of it. We did not hear where, okay, honey, you stand there. Let's make sure 
that this child going to that Pharaoh's family, eh? okay, you stand by the corner. I'm going to put him now in the basket. Oh, rather, we heard Miriam was there. We had, you know, so I don't know, maybe I don't read my, you know, there are rabbis here, so I don't read my Bible very well. Maybe I don't, I didn't say, but I don't say significant, so, you know, very prominent role he played. Listen to me. We are lifting up our voice. You are here at the sound of my voice. You have envisaged your children being great, but your husband is missing. You have envisaged your children being great, but your wife is missing. You are lifting up your voice. And I say, Lord, Lord have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy. Restore the bond for parents. Restore the bond for parenting. Restore the bond for parenting. Restore the bond, oh God, for parenting. In the name of Jesus, by your mercy, oh God. Everyone where the father is present yet absent. Restore, God, by your mercy. For the sake of the children, oh God, show mercy to reason in the name of Jesus. Any area, oh God, your husbands or wives are absent financially, absent emotionally, oh God, restore miracles. Oh God, any home where the fathers are absent, oh God, in their duties and responsibilities, show mercy, oh God, to this adventure. They don't know what to do, Father, by your mercy, oh God. Yeah, I understanding, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, any home where the wife is not doing their duties and responsibilities, Father, restore God, restore God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, restore God, open their eyes, open the eyes of their understanding, open their hearts, oh God, to be receptive, in the name of Jesus. Maru, da-da-da-da, speak to them, convict them, oh God, by your Mercy. Mighty name, Amen. we are praised. Amen. You don't need mercy. We don't need mercy if we have not fallen short. Mm. We have not sinned. We don't need mercy. And it's going to be pride if a parent will say that I have never done anything wrong. You see, mm -hmm. our key scripture for today is in the book of Isaiah, which what is the is the best scripture for this theme this week, this month. Isaiah 30 verse 18. He say he's guarding strength to show mercy to you. Don't mm -hmm. repel his mercy. Don't mm -hmm. reject his mercy. Rather mm -hmm. ask. Amen. For mercy, he said, Let us come boldly to the throne of grace to mm -hmm. obtain mercy in times of need. There are times you need mercy, and that time is now. Oh, Amen. we need the mercy of God to preserve Amen. our children. There Amen. are those written in the United Nations that are fabricated many years before we came here to destroy the children. You see, the family. This structure has been planned by the enemy to be destroyed from time immemorial. And hello, you are here to take charge. You are here to say, my children and the children that are around me, that I am taking care of, for signs and wonders. I will not give over my children. That, 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 they will not meet wrong things. You are lifting up your voice. And you are praying. Baba, shake it, shake it. By your mercy, by your mercy, by your mercy, by your mercy, in the name of Jesus, by your mercy, in the name of Jesus. Mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. I've been looking at everything around living a life in the spirit, and I found out that in the realm of the spirit, there are two sides. We all know that, isn't it? God speaking, the devil speaking. Very simple. If you understand that, then you know everything in the realm of the spirit. And so if you read the Bible and the Bible says something, I say the voice of the Lord said this. If you want to know what the voice of the devil is saying, you don't even need to read it. Just turn it upside down. That's the voice of the devil. In the realm of the spirit, the voice of God is speaking a particular thing. The devil just, all he does is directly opposite of what God is saying. When the Bible said that you will hear in your voice, this is the way, walk daring. That is what the devil will still be whispering in the voice of the children. 
in the voice of teenagers. When God is saying, this is the way it's left, walk daring, the devil in the realm of the spirit is saying to them, that is the way, walk daring. You're going to lift up your voice. Any voice in their school, any voice in the neighborhood, any voice assigned to send my children astray, I fight it by fire. I come against it by fire. No voice uh, that is sent into this generation to destroy children uh, shall find my children. No voice sent into this generation to frustrate my children. Mayagaleka Sota will find them. Begin to block their voice uh, with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Begin to block their ears uh, with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why do I think this is important? Let me tell you something you need to know. In the name was with Eli, and suddenly he heard the voice. He could have been the voice of the devil. Eli, being familiar with how God spoke, knew that that was the voice of God. You are saying, my children shall hear like this somewhere. They will hear the voice of God. My children will hear the voice of God. My children will hear the voice of the other teenagers. My children will not hear the voice of crazy. My children will hear the voice of crazy. Voice of violence, my children, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. voice of transgender, my son will not become a son, my child will not become a son. In the name of Jesus Christ, my brother, the enemy does not hear the voice of the devil, does not hear the voice of the devil, does not hear no matter how the voice comes. My brother, the devil goes to go to the father, father, they will not hear, they will not hear. The name of the devil, the name of the devil, the name of the devil, the name of the in the name of Jesus, only the voice of God they will hear. They will hear the teacher. They will hear the, the Holy Spirit and the, the voice of the Holy Spirit that says, "Here is the way working it." In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, you see why it's important for us to pray this prayer. Let me tell you, a young girl, a 30-year-old girl that was Miss USA, I think in 2019, just got up. In fact, she has seen life. She became an Athoniot or so in, uh, I think the state of Mississippi, I'm not so sure where in the US, but he she she had reason in career she was an influencer she was this she was anything that a normal girl would say oh my god i admire she was every of those things she was she was rich she was wealthy she just got up one day went up one story building whatever floor and threw herself and committed suicide a voice was telling her go and kill yourself go and kill yourself it's not worth it money is not everything die now that and those that don't have money are saying if the voice will be telling her you don't have money go and die go and die then another one will say your mental state is not all right how can you be 30 and this is going on how can you be this you know one voice is telling them well my kika leka sounds i want us to lift up our voice please i want us to pray as if this is the in fact this is the last thing we're praying about and you are saying every negative voice, every negative voice that has been placed around in the schools, that have been placed around in the Jesus Christ. Every negative voice, more in the name of Jesus, every voice of my children, any voice that is contrary to the voice of the devil, any voice that is contrary to the wisdom of God and the things of God, every voice that is no God by the mercy of God, our children will not hear those voices, our children will not. Hear those teachings in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, even in their peers, even when they were with their friends, any voice of their peers that is contrary to the voice of our children will not hear them in the name of Jesus. Mighty name, we are praying. Amen. As we're praying, the last thing I want to say is I felt in my spirit that there are some children that have gone very far, they've heard the voice already. And we are praying for the the voice already. I want us to do something. Even in that realm of the spirit, there was a man called Nebuchadnezzar. He actually had a dream. He forgot. Isn't it? He forgot that dream. That means in the realm of the spirit, something can be forgotten in the brain. You are going to lift up your voice. Anything, my son, my daughter, my child, 
head. Now looking after the head that is not in accordance with your will for them. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, let it be released from their memory. Anything that they have heard that they should not have heard. Anything that they have seen that they should not have seen. Anything that pollutes that they have heard or seen. Father, oh God, by the mercy of God, let the mercy erase. Let the mercy erase. Let the mercy of God erase. Let the blood of Jesus Christ erase. Ah, the blood that speaks mercy. Let it erase from the minds of our children, from their, their hearts, from their thoughts, from their emotions. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the mercy of God erase the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, let your mercy erase. In Jesus mighty name we are praying amen amen oh you are my strength strength like no other i pray strength upon every father amen we do not understand what goes on in your mind because i am not a man lord i ask for special strength for the men in the name of jesus amen father we ask for unique strength for the men in the name of jesus amen father we ask for mercy anywhere they've made a mistake mercy amen. in the name of jesus amen that mm. as stewards to the children you have given them. Mm. Oh, they will not be missing in their life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know where Adam was when Cain sliced Abel's mm. neck. I mm. ask that no father here will be missing. In Amen. Amen. We look through scripture, we don't understand where Moses' father was. My God and my father. I beg of you that no father will be missing. Amen. The- Amen. Amen. All the mothers here, I might be a woman, but I don't know what you are experiencing in your home. I don't know what you're experiencing in your life, and so I ask for strength. Amen. I ask for strength. I Amen. ask for strength Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I- and I declare over you that mm-hmm. the grace of God will be sufficient. Let Amen. the mess- God, let the mercy of God, let the mercy of God overshadow every mistake you have made. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All of the children. Ah, the Bible says children and heritage of the Lord. I pray for the teenagers. I pray for the young adults. I pray for the the children amongst us. Amen. Amen. God, raise them in your way. Amen. Amen. What they ought to know. Amen. They will not go astray. They will Amen. not go astray. They will Amen. not go astray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. They will fight the enemy at the gate. Amen. They will fight the enemy at the gate. Amen. And when they will Amen. win, they will come out victorious. Amen. Yes, Lord. David Amen. went to war with Goliath and he took the head of Goliath. I decree that every of our children will take the head of the Goliath. That Amen. Them and their destiny of Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, for, uh, Reverend Comfort, um, for that great, great time. Um, what an encouraging time of prayers, and um, you know, it's it's quite important if you if you take your time to listen to the news and all that, you will see a hundred and one reasons why we as parents need to constantly pray for our children. And um, please let it not just be a thing of the first Saturdays of every month. Let it be a thing of every morning before we release our children to go to school. You lay your hands and pray on them. You cover them. You decree what you want to see. When they come back home, you pray for them to cancel and to take out anything that is not of God that might have been, they might have, 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 have absorbed into them in school and all that. When they go to bed, you cover them again, that the Lord will speak to them in their sleep and in their dreams. And, you know, they will have encounters with God. We want our children to be, to be, to be the future of the church. Our children has to be that next generation. And we don't want to be like the previous generation that failed by not carrying their children along. So the Lord will help us as parents, as caregivers, as caretakers of these children. As Reverend Comfort said, we are only custodians of these children. You know, these children belong to the Lord, but he has given them to us. You know, they are a gift. The Bible tells us children are a gift from the Lord. 
So they are only a gift that the Lord has given to us. And the grace, the grace to manage, to keep, and to raise these gifts in the way that the Lord has prepared for them, the Lord will give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. One of my favorite scripture, train up a child in the way he should go, not in the way we parents want them to go. But for us to know the way the child needs to go, we need to go back to the orchestrator of the child who is God. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, Reverend Comfort, they, we, once again, on behalf of the church, on behalf of it, Tabernacle of Grace on behalf of Edinburgh Tabernacle, we say a very big thank you, and the Lord will continue to do great things in your ministry and in your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time we hear of you, it will be great and great testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. You will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength in the mighty name of Jesus. You and the children the Lord has given you, you will be for signs and wonders in the mighty name of of Jesus. Your children will be thought of the Lord and great shall be their reward in the mighty name of Jesus. Your children are 10 times better than their colleagues in the mighty name of Jesus. The way it was of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that they found them 10 times better, so shall it be for us all in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord will continue to take us from glory to glory and from strength to strength. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, so next month, we would continue again on the first Saturday of next month. And um, another exciting and interesting time for us to come together and pray for our children. Until then, stay blessed and continue to stay in touch. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. And bye. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. God bless you. Bye.